Now I learned something new about the Prince Nymph today, which surprised me a little because like most of us, I thought it was an original creation created by Doug Prince of California sometime in the 1930s or 40s. And it kind of was, but it turns out there was a predecessor to it called the Brown Forktail, with the primary difference being the Brown Forktail used black ostrich instead of peacock curl for the body. Now this pattern, the Brown Forktail, was created by Don and Dick Olson of Minnesota in the 1930s. And no one knows for sure, but it's likely that it was this pattern that was the inspiration for what Doug Prince created in the early 1940s. And it's probably safe to say that when it appeared in Buzz Busick's catalog and he called it the Prince Nymph, that that's when it really started gaining popularity. Now it still didn't have a bead. That came a little bit later, but adding the bead is pretty much what turned it into the fly we know of today. And it's still hugely popular. Up there with Sawyer's pheasant tail and the gold ribbed hare's ear, most historians will put this up there in the top two or three nymphs of all time. I mean, it has its own Wikipedia page and not many fly patterns can say that. But of course, with any popular fly, it spawned a lot of variations. One of them I'm gonna tie for you today and it's just swapping some of the brown hen hackle for CDC. Now that doesn't necessarily make the fly any easier to tie, but it does give it just a little bit of a different look in the water. And I do get a little crazy with mine sometimes. I'll swap out the colors of the beads. I'll do it with a green, maybe a black or a silver. And earlier today, I tied a couple of them with a hot pink bead. So tie it however you like, just have fun with it. And if you don't tie and fish these, I would encourage you to put a few of them in your box. It has been a popular fly for almost a hundred years for a reason. This thing catches a lot of fish. So there it is in the vise, a CDC Prince Nymph. Pretty cool pattern. You know this thing's gonna work. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a 1X long barbless nymph hook. And this is a 2.8 uh, brass bead, not a tungsten bead. And since it's brass, I am gonna put down some weight. This is 015 uh, lead free. I'll put about six or eight wraps. Now I'm gonna take some black thread. This is a 70 denier. I'll put a dam behind this weight, a few wraps up over it, and then take it back to the bend of the hook. Now here is something I do, and a lot of people do as well. Put about six wraps right here on top of each other, just to build a little bump. I'll back the thread off a little bit, and it might be imperceptible, but it will help with these brown biots we're gonna tie on for the tail. So take two brown biots, flip them back to back, and try to keep the tips aligned. And we're gonna put it about maybe a half, maybe a little bit longer than the length of the body. And I'm gonna tie them in right on top, but a little bit on the side. And then I'm gonna cheat a little bit toward my side. So let's do a couple of medium to loose wraps right here, and then take a look at it. See, those might be a little bit too close together, so let's position them before we really lock it in. Okay, I like that right there. Now I'm just gonna to try to hold them tight while I put some tight wraps going back. Okay, take a look, still looks fine. Now just bury these or snip the butt ends up here. Now we take some French oval tinsel and gold, and this is a size medium. If you want any smaller with this fly, you could certainly go to a small, but I think medium works on sizes 12, 14s, or 16s. Let's catch this in all the way back to where we're gonna wrap it, bring our thread back up behind that weight. Now let's catch in two or three strands of peacock curl. And depending on the quality of your hurl, you know, you could probably get away with two strands. Mine is getting a little bit shaggy down here, so I'm gonna definitely need three strands. And I will catch this in all the way back here to where I wanna start wrapping it and either snip or pluck these out. I'm gonna have to snip them. They were a little bit strong there. Now you have an option here. You can either spin this hurl as a rope, or if you don't wanna do that, and I think this is quicker, just leave your thread right there at the, in the middle of the fly, and then just wrap these up. And they might start spreading out on you, but that's okay. This thread will keep them from spreading out too much. Now when you got that up there, let's just counter wrap this rib. I'm gonna do four wraps and then catch in the fifth wrap. Actually, I'm gonna catch in the fourth wrap. I think we're enough 
We've got enough wraps right there, we're in fine shape. Now this is where this pattern is a variation of the original prints. I'm not using brown soft hackle for the, the hackle, the collar up here. I'm using a tan CDC. You know, a tan or natural, even done colored would look fine right here. So I'm gonna catch this in, fold it back over, couple more wraps, we'll snip this off. And don't worry about, you know, what the quality of your CDC is, because we're gonna trim it. Uh, so you don't need to worry about how long the, the barbs are or how, you know, what the fiber density is. We're going to put a whole lot more on here than we think we're going to need or want. And that's really two wraps. Two wraps is going to put a lot of fibers down. Okay, you see that? That's not terribly too many, but it's a lot buggier than we really want. So I'm gonna put a few extra wraps and take that back from the bead. And what I'll do here, any of these coming off the top, you know, you could leave them. I think this thing is probably gonna fish just fine like this, but it doesn't take but two seconds to, to trim them off the top there. And now we've got them coming down off the, the sides and the bottom and still a little bit long. So I will trim them again. You could do the pinch and pluck method right here, but it's just as quick to snip them. Now only one more component, it's a white goose biots. And these things, you don't have to flip them back to back, I just keep them concave side down and measure them about a, you know, to the back of the hook there. So let's just try to lay them on there. You got a little bit of a V. I'm gonna put two loose wraps and then position them if I need to. And here's where these Bishop tweezers come in handy. If you need to just grab one of these and, and then pull it out a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier right there. I like that spread right there. So what I'll do is cord up my thread, clockwise spin, I'm getting it pretty tight. Now a couple of tight wraps right here, really locking these top biots in. Okay, now we're ready to fill in this head. You can just push these up if you want. You can try to singe them. I don't worry about it, I make these for fishing. So I'll put a bunch of loose wraps right here and fill in this area between the bead and the biots. Now just a three or four turn whip finish, and this thing is almost done here. Now see if you got any cleanup. You might want to trim these, these uh, CDC fibers some, but in this case, nope, I'm leaving it just like that. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement right there on the top of that bead, let it wig down those thread wraps, and this thing is perfectly good to go and ready to fish. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Take care, we'll see you next time.